thank you, Sister Rumbi, for leading out the prayer. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, before we start, shall we have a song? If we can do him number six, please. Which of his uh, holiness? He's got four stanzas. Do I have any volunteers? Yes, we can do the first one. Yeah, stanza number two. I'll take yeah. number two. And number three. Do you know this song? I don't know this one. I could have taken another one. Uh, all done. I'm not a singer, but I will try. Is it okay if I try what number um uh, uh, number three? Yes, Rumbi. Yes, I can do number three. Uh, okay. I could do number one, but because I don't follow like that, you know, so I wouldn't be a good starter at all. Uh, okay. All right, and then number four. Um, the twins, uh, if we can swap, can you do number four and then I can do number one? Yes, that's fine. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness. Kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Lord, at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness. High on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness. Guide in thy steps as may best for thee be. Cannot to enter his God in the standardness of the poor world. Thou is where God is done. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness. These are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These are we bring them in trembling and tearfulness. He will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give for evenings of tearfulness. Trust for a trembling and hopeful our fears.
Please. Thank you. Uh, fear not to enter his courts in slanderness. This is a beautiful song. We come before him. We tremble at his feet. Let us pray. Mighty God in heaven, Lord, we pause at this moment to give you thanks. We thank you for life. We thank you, Lord, that we still tarry in the land of the living. It is only because of your mercies that we are not consumed. It's got nothing to do with anybody's alarm. Therefore, we're truly grateful and thankful, Lord, that you have woken us up uh, for a reason. And this is to glorify your name, Lord, and to further your work. We pray that as we are about to read the spirit of prophecy, Lord, we pray for teachable hearts. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will be with us and lead us so that we may understand and take lessons from what is written uh, in your pen of inspiration. Be with us in a special way, Lord, and we pray that you beat back the power of darkness that may befall this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we'll share the screen. Okay, can we see the screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Yeah, we are trying to close. Uh, I think we will finish this today. Um, we continue with the influence, uh, as the scripture says, that beware of the living of the Pharisees. Uh, we have discussed what is the leaven and how it affects. Um, like the yeast affects the bread from um, from within, but the influence is so subtle that is easy to miss it. So we'll continue reading. Uh, it's actually a rebuke that is being given to the Pharisees. So if we can start reading from. Think yeah, before we read, let us read John twelve twenty eight and first John first John two and then six uh, verse six. Does anyone have uh, John twelve twenty eight? Father, glorify thy name. Then came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Thank you, Twins. And first John two uh, verse six. He that saith, he abideth in him or himself also to walk, even as he walked. Thank you. I need a reader to do, to read from DA409.1. Uh, just read up to the end, please. Any volunteer to read? Read. The hypocrisy okay. of the Pharisees was the product of so seeking the glorification of themselves. Sorry, let me start again. The hypocrisy of the Pharisees was the product of so seeking. The glorification of themselves was the object of their lives. It was this that led them to pervert and misapply the scriptures and blinded them to the purpose of God's mission, of Christ's mission. 
this subtle evil, even the disciples of Christ, were in danger of cherishing. Those who classed themselves with the followers of Jesus, but who had not left all in order to become his disciples, were influenced in a great degree by the reasoning of the Pharisees. They were often vacillating between faith and unbelief, and they did not discern the treasures of wisdom hidden in Christ. Even the disciples, though outwardly they had left all for Jesus' sake, had not in heart ceased to seek great things for themselves. It was the spirit that prompted the strife as to who should be greatest. It was this that came between them and Christ, making them so little in sympathy with his mission of self-sacrifice, so slow to comprehend the mystery of redemption. As living, if left to complete its work, will cause corruption and decay, so does the self-seeking spirit cherished work work the defilement and ruin of the soul. Among the followers of our Lord today, as of old, how widespread is this sub subtle deceptive sin? How, how often our service to Christ, our communion with one another is marred by the secret desire to exalt soul? How ready the thought of self gratitude um, gratulation and the longing for human approval. It is the love of self, the desire for an easier way than God has appointed that leads to the substitution of human theories and traditions for the divine precepts. To his own disciples, the warning words of Christ are spoken. Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. The religion of Christ is sincerity itself. Zeal for God's glory is the motive implanted by the Holy Spirit, and only the effectual working of the Spirit can implant this motive. Only the power of God can banish self-seeking and hypocrisy. This change is the sign of his working. When, when the faith we accept destroys selfishness and pretense, when it leads us to seek God's glory and not our own, we may know that it is of the right order. Father, glorify thy name, John 12, verse 28, was the keynote of Christ's life. And if we follow him, this will be the keynote of our life. He commands us to walk even as he walked. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's John 2, verse 6. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Judith, for the reading. Um, if we can comment from DA 409.1. Uh, going forward, uh, this, uh, the spirit of prophecy continues uh, talking about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, that they were self-seeking. It was everything they did. It was for their own, for their own glory. But we were not created for our own glory. We were created for the glory of God. So whatever we do has to glorify God but it shows us how selfish they were. And their selfishness had an influence on the other people, uh, which was misleading. Uh, do I have any comments? Uh, Sister Shalene? It's good morning. It's just very helpful, um, these passages, just to show us that you know, God can take us, lead us through to, to, to a much higher level. The disciples weren't where they were supposed to be in the beginning but God step by step he took them to where he wanted them to be and to where they could be servants for God and where they could serve and have mercy on others so it's just very encouraging to me that 
you know, God never gave up on the disciples and he doesn't give up on us. You know, he takes us by the hand and he says, I'm going to help you to reach that level where you can be useful to me. And that's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Charlene. I think even if we see that the disciples walked with him, but he will keep on, uh, I mean, sometimes you rebuke them and he was working with them indeed. He didn't give up on them, but the teaching was continually. Anybody else? Any comment? Any questions? Sister Hope? Uh, uh, thank you, Elder, and good morning all. Um, the issue, which is so much of our issue even today, is self-seeking, self selfishness, self-centeredness, self-ambition, self-inclination, self-passion, all those things. Indeed, as it's been written there, that self is sin. Because, But uh, why? It's because, you know, when we were created and through our forefathers, that's where the sin came in, isn't it? We tend to look to ourselves. Uh, we Even when you're doing something right, you think yourself doing it. <laughs> and uh, And that's not what it is. And that is what perverted the minds of those people. And that is what perverts us. Uh, and it is indeed very subtle, very subtle. You, we, I, I might be willing maybe to pray. And I'm going, why oh, I cannot do this? I can, self comes in. It's so subtle. It's, uh, um, if you do anything in your own power, in your own strength, mm -mm. That is why he says it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the spirit. So the flesh and the spirit are always warring. And that is why we so thank God for Christ. Uh, and thank you, God, that he's always there to teach us. If we have a willing spirit to teach, because these, these Pharisees, as much as they saw they, they saw what Christ did and were and a reflection of his character of Christ and what he was teaching. But still, the stony heart was still there. And that stony heart is self. It still comes back to self. So we have to pray. We have to pray that the, this leaven may not take us. And we thank God because he's procured a way for us. That when that comes in and the Holy Spirit prompts you, hey, it's not about you, it's all about me. I'll give you power. Don't worry about yourself. Just bring your burdens to me. Just bring your worry to me. And then God will help us to take us in those stages because we grow from faith to faith, character to character, glory to glory, and grace to grace. Amen. Um, and indeed, thank Amen. you, thank you, Sister Hope, for, uh, for that comment. Anybody else? I think if we look at John 16, verse, uh, verse 13, uh, it talks about the spirit of truth. And uh, we know that Jesus is uh, the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, so it is how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever uh, he shall hear that he shall speak he will show show you things to come so the Holy Spirit will reveal all truth to us and if the Holy Spirit is revealing all truth to I mean to us a simple revealing who is Christ to us. So even if Christ is not here on earth, he has said, I'll leave you the comfort, I won't leave you comfortless. So since the Holy Spirit draws us to to I mean to the truth, it actually draws us to Christ. And if it's drawing us to Christ, which is the truth, who is the truth? 
it's symbol drawing also the scripture because in the beginning i mean in the beginning we know that christ is the word so the word can only lead us to, to the truth so it's all interlinked but we need the holy spirit really in our hearts and uh, we need to surrender we have got prayer retreat i think it's uh, the sister sharon no it's uh, it's oh, me. sorry sorry yes no, that's that's all right uh, good morning uh, thank you uh, brother jp and good morning everyone on the platform yes uh a sister white that this is the the self is the greatest battle which we face is uh, humanity uh, self gratification self exaltation self reliance self um or even you know um i was just thinking even our prayers uh it's all about self a lot of times how does um god how is god exalted in in those prayers sometimes what we request is all about self and it's it's a it's it's a constant battle i think this this statement which sister white makes here that among the followers of our lord today is of old how widespread this is this subtle deceptive sin um we can you know for instance we can even i'm talking as i'm speaking reflecting on myself you can look at the children yes they have their problems but sometimes you put yourself that they are they they, they are embarrassing you and you are already putting yourself in there um you know or you can look at um any situation, but why is this one done this for me? Everything, you know, you're wanting to point, how does it, how does it give glory to God? Whatever, as, as, as Christ is saying here that you are saying, you'll be glorified, glorify thy name. He never did anything, not, not a single thing for himself. Um, he did everything for other people and nothing for himself. As even we look at creation, it's about, it's a life of service of the other. The vegetation, they give us oxygen, we give them carbon dioxide. His, when he created this world, it was to save each other, to save and ultimately to look up to God who is our, our creator, our redeemer. It was not about uh, self-service, not at all. Even the commandments of God, if you look at them, it's about service to the others. Therefore, it's it's a constant battle that this self has to be to be eliminated. We cannot enter heaven with this self. That is the old man which told Paul talks about that he has to be eradicated. He has to die daily he has to, we have to humble ourselves moment by moment to eradicate self to say i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live not i but christ lives in me what a powerful prayer if each one of us can wake up or and pray for that that lord eradicate self in me Whatever I'm going to be doing, Lord, take away self only for your glory and you alone. Glorify God. May the Lord be glorified in my life. What a life. Because even when we go to heaven, the angels are ready to save God. They are ready to save us. Right now we are being, we are saved by the angels. They never saved themselves. They are ready just to save us. And we, humanity, we have to eradicate that, that spirit. It comes from Satan. He who wanted to be exalted. So it is a constant battle. 
this is a constant battle, daily battle, moment by moment battle. This is why, you know, we have to reflect on everything that we are doing, reflect on anything that we are saying, because let's look whether there is self in it. I was just sharing with my sister uh, yesterday when I went to see her and um, she was telling she was telling me that uh, they have found the you know the bottom of the problem we were talking about you know saving the poor uh, um, on the Sabbath and so forth. It was not a genuine. There was this self interest in it that you know uh, the food is taken away from from whoever the donors are, Sainsbury, the supermarkets, and the people who are saving. They actually make, you know, provisions from themselves first before they even save the, the homeless. So you can see this battle is it's a self, self battle. Even my other friend was telling me that they wanted to get back the kitchen from the a group which are saving the homeless, but they couldn't. But then when they discovered that, no, our conference was being paid money because this group was not Seventh-day Adventist. But uh, secretly, this group actually paid some money to the conference. So the conference was being serviced. So they wanted that money. So there was self, whereas the church is fighting. So the, you see, all this battle is to do what is it for me? The, the, the spirit of, of the enemy is embedded in us so much that we need the Holy Spirit moment by moment to eradicate self, to die to self, to die to self. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Sister Kezia. Yeah, indeed, this is uh, the disease that is a problem. Um, I mean, self-seeking righteousness was the problem of the Pharisees. Uh, they said it was the spirit that prompted strife as to who should be the greatest. We see this even with the disciples. Uh, it was this that came between them and Christ and them making them so little in sympathy with him with his mission of self-sacrifice, so slow to comprehend the mystery of redemption as living, if left to complete its work, will cause corruption and decay. So does the self-seeking spirit cherished, I mean, it says, work the defilement and ruin the soul. So this is really um, serious. And as I said, this is like an individual battle because nobody can compel anybody to surrender self. But self has to die. Uh, that's why Paul says, I die daily. So self can actually separate us from Christ. Regardless, we are singing, have thine your own way. You can sing all these songs, but if the heart is not surrendered and if self is not crucified in us, we have the same, we'll have the same problem as the Pharisees of self. So, any other comments? Yes, can I come in, please? Yes, yes. Good morning, good morning, Reverend. I pray everyone as well. Yes, I wanted to to go to the issue of strife. Um, you know, it's um it's one of the things that we read in the scriptures. In fact, I was going to um to to read a text uh, in Philippians chapter two, but let me read uh, what he's saying in the paragraph first. Um it says, uh, it was this, um, uh, I think, even the disciples, though outwardly, they had left all for Jesus. So, speaking for the disciples, that they were not immune, they were not uh, exempt um, from this spirit. Uh, so, 
what I figured out going through this paragraph, you can live all for Christ physically. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, but you can do that. But the biggest uh, surrender has to be in spirit. So let me just read this bit for it. It says, um, they were often, uh, speaking of the Pharisees, uh, want to see about the disciples. Um, okay. Even the disciples, though outwardly, they had left all for Jesus' sake, had not in heart ceased to seek great things for themselves. It was this spirit that prompted the strife as to who should be the greatest. So when I read that part, I, 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 I was contemplating on that, that people can see outwardly that we have left all for Christ. You know, people will start changing um, the dress habits or the eating habits. Those are outward. Uh, uh, and those are good things. Yeah, the, the, those are, uh, are are important strides, you know. But um, it, it, it's amazing to see that the outward reforms, uh, in as much as they are important, it the work doesn't end there. He says, in heart they had not ceased to seek great things for themselves. And this was uh, something that I was thinking, uh, reflecting on. Have I ceased in heart uh, to seek great things for myself? That's what we need to be asking ourselves. It might not show it outwardly, but um, we saw it with the disciples. That's why they were striving over who should be the greatest. The other time, John and James, uh, the mother of the two, came to Jesus and said, um, she desired, she was a disciple herself, and the two sons were disciples, but she wanted the best position for her sons. So great things for the family, for her and for her sons. Um, some of the things might seem to be spiritual, but the spirit of strife or the spirit of seeking a great place or a high place is not of Christ. Whether it's in spiritual things or in worldly things, the spirit of seeking to be the greatest is not the spirit of Christ. So, um, yeah, that's something that uh, stood out for me there. That uh, we need to prayerfully uh, surrender the heart also uh, that if we give everything outwardly the heart also must be surrendered uh, to Christ fully yeah. thank you Father D yeah indeed the, the heart must be surrendered uh, this um uh, self-seeking spirit that's always brings strife I think in every church you find strife um, some striving to be elders some striving to be in this position and some who are in the position striving to tarry in the same position uh, forever as if they were the bad right to be in that position there is a lot of self that we see and we can talk about um, the heart must be surrendered because it's only Christ that can mold the heart uh, into his likeness. It's only him that can mold the heart in order for us to fully reflect the talent of Christ. In other words, uh, the Holy Spirit has to take charge of our lives I mean completely fully and we have to obey 
what God says to us, like the commandments and so forth. Uh, but we can talk about, I mean, and seeing have thy in your own way, oh Lord. But how really uh, do we surrender the heart? I have to ask because um, this seems to be um, uh, a serious problem, this self-seeking. And it is, this, we are not just looking at the fact that it, this was affecting the Pharisees, but this is the same spirit that Satan had even in heaven because he said, if I can ascend above the Mount of, of Congregation, if I can be like the Most High. So the Most High was getting um, all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the worship. So Satan says, if I can be worshipped, if, if I can be, I mean, worshipped like God. So this spirit started with Satan. But uh, we need a remedy for this, uh, I mean, for this problem of self-seeking. Uh, the twins? Yes, good morning. Uh, there's so many uh, the warnings in this uh, in this uh, chapter. Take heed and beware of the leaven and the Pharisees. Well, uh, self-glorification was another one, you know. Um, and, and then and Jesus was trying to get the disciples to um, realize that um, you, you don't exalt self. Self, um, um, exalting self can cause um, jealousy and jealousy is a really one of the nasty sins. That's what was happening in heaven to start with. Satan was jealous of Jesus' position and he wanted it himself. And look what it's, look what it's cut done. It's caused 6,000 years of rebellion and sin. And um, so um, we've got to, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be the hymn, not I but Christ, to be honoured, loved, exalted. And so we, if we if we uh, do everything um, through Christ, you know, um, honor honor Him and glorify Him, and then we're not going to, self's not going to get in the way. Thank you. Thank you, twins. Um, I'll take prayer retreat ministry and then Brother D. Yes, thank you, uh, 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 Brother JB. Yes, just to continue on the self, uh, you know, that is the key to Christianity. And I was listening to this uh, preacher. I never used to really understand self. I'm, I'm battling with self as well. And the example which he, he thought I thought I would want to share with everyone, that when we say uh, we've given up self, we are dead. A dead person does not react. If you are dead in Christ, you do not react. This is why you can even uh, understand the verse which says that, um, I think it's Psalms 119, verse 165. That, uh, let's, let, let's look at that verse. Uh, I think it's Psalms 119. Um, Verse one sixty five that talks about not being offended by anything, but I just wanted to read the actual words themselves. Yes, great peace if they that love thy law, nothing shall offend them. So when we are dead to Christ, even if somebody says, or oh, you have heard somebody speaking against you or anything, you are dead. How do you react? He was giving an example of um, you going, you've gone for a funeral, you know, the, you, a funeral wake where they put the coffin and people, you know, in this, I think they leave the op coffin open, those who want to view the coffin or say their last words, not in church or anything. So this man, uh, comes up and uh, and looks at this dead person, and this dead person had done so much wrong um, to, in his life, 
and he stands there and looks at him and his rage comes says look i must do the final thing and he slaps that that dead person with you know with his hand in the coffin and suddenly the dead person gets up and slaps him back is that person back is that person dead at all you can see that that person is not dead that's what we do we say we are dead to self but the moment somebody cuts you on the road or somebody that old man rises up and you slap back you snap back and you are offended by this and that and you know that's we are not dead to self if we are still having those same re, same you know that reaction that it that anything you have a reaction to something go back on your knees and start praying that lord is your spirit departed from me lord may i have more of your spirit because when christ was when when they did all sorts of things to christ he never retaliated he never fought back he never did anything because we are saying christ lives in me now so there is no reaction that should come from any of us from this group there is no reaction that should come which is negative from our minds if we are connected and we are constantly asking for the holy spirit when christ is saying i can't remember which way which gospel it is where he says he say if the man asks you to to go with him for a mile take him for two miles that is dying to self practical ways of dying to self and we need to constantly be praying for the holy spirit so that we are dead to self and even our prayers will be seen as people who are because we are praying more of those things christ is praying through us for those things for more laborers to come for you know for everything to his to his glory to further his kingdom rather than for us to say i want to be safe this one has done this to me or oh, that one has done this to me we are dead to self let's remember that we are dead to self when we have surrendered to christ thank you thank you sister kezia i think uh, brother d uh, yes did give an example of uh, somebody who is in a morgue as well and this is very serious if we consider somebody who is clinically declared dead certified that's why someone as it is certified it means they're completely gone they they are no longer a living soul so the breath is totally gone back to the giver of the breath so whatever happens to that person whether somebody steps on them or they are just it, there is no self in them totally and that is how uh, we are supposed to be if christ lives in us fully self i mean self i think dies but it's it's a gradual process and we have to pray and have the willingness to surrender the heart and for self to die i mean in us really i think through a lot of uh, prayer uh, all things are possible so it's possible for us to die to self as well as it's possible for us to cease to sin totally in this life uh brother d amen amen uh yeah thank you for those uh, powerful thoughts uh uh, brother J P and Mother Kesha, um, I mean the the whole life that we are given to live here. Uh, when the Bible says to him, 
that will overcome it. The battle is against self. And um, those who are going to be saved one day have uh, are overcomers on this point. In fact, this was the same test that Christ has had to pass. And it was more painful. Uh, it, it, beca it became it, it became more uh, intense in his final days, uh, in, in the closing scenes of his life in Gethsemane. Says Satan is pushing. God wants, he knows, God has given enough power, there is enough grace for us to be overcomers. But I'm just thinking that um, when we overcome self, we are ready for translation. But again, we are told that it's not a one-day battle. That's why the Apostle Paul says, "We die day, I die daily. So each day has its own challenges. The devil has another opportunity to press you to die to self. The test comes every day on whether we will give in to self or we will die to self. We choose Christ or we choose self. And Satan always appeals through self. Um, like I said, this was the same test that Christ had to pass. Do this. Um, change this. The, 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 the enemy says, you know, um, change this, the stones into bread. Because you're hungry. He was appealing to self because Christ was hungry. You know, he, he, you feel hungry. He, it's self. And then he presents other two temptations. Again, it's it's to do with self. But I wanted to, to because you had asked the question, how do we surrender? How do we... Um, do we give this, 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 uh, 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 how do we surrender this, uh, this self or this heart? Uh, because the heart, when the Bible speaks of the heart, it's speaking of the mind. The, the heart does not think. But it's interesting that uh, when the Bible is addressing the mind, um, it talks of the heart. That's why in, um, uh, Matthew 5, verse 8, it says, uh, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I mean, the heart itself, it, it pumps blood. But the, 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 the part that is responsible for decision-making where all the evil starts is the mind. So Christ, uh, I mean, the Apostle Paul under inspiration says a powerful statement in Philippians 2. Uh, it's, um, I read it sort of uh, highlighted that text um, in passing before. But it's such a powerful text. If you notice, it says in um, verse 5, let this mind, even the, 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 the wording of that text is so powerful. It says, let this mind be in you also. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let. So, so the question is, how do we get there? The answer is, let this mind. Now, why is the Apostle Paul saying let? So it's our choice. Every day we're presented with the choice of either letting the mind of Christ by God's grace, or we say, no, I'll do it my way. Christ is happy to let his mind, you know, because this is some language that he uses when he was creating. 
He says, let there be light. He speaks. He, when he speaks, there's power in his word. If we let him speak his mind into us through his word, that will be, that will come to pass. But we have a choice. God will not force his mind on us. If we let his mind, then it's going to be. It will come to pass, as it says in Genesis chapter 1. So uh, just to answer the question, how do we, the way, same way God created, this is what the apostle again says in Second Corinthians 4, verse 6. Christ who commanded the light to shine in darkness has also shined in our hearts. Again, speaking of the mind. Just as how he commanded the light, Physically, he can command light in our darkened mind, and he will allow the mind of Christ to, 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 to take over. But we have to consciously um, let or rather choose the mind of Christ. Um, Thank you, Brother Jay. I think uh, Sister Hope has put it. Uh... Let's put Galatians 2, verse 20. He says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who, lo who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's Christ. That's why Paul says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So it's not Paul that was living anymore. It was Christ that was living in him. So we have to get to that um, uh, to that level. But as Brother D says, that it's a it's a choice. It's an it's a conscious, intentional choice uh, to surrender. If we are willing to surrender, then all things will be possible. We will surrender to Christ and he will do the rest. But there must be uh, a cooperation of humanity with divinity. And then we have victory. So divinity has already cooperated. Christ says he will do all he can do and uh, to serve us. But we have to surrender. That is that is where we are. Otherwise, if we can just um, otherwise, if we are able to surrender without deciding to surrender, and then that will be like forcing us. But uh, God doesn't force anybody. Um, any further comment on the other um, uh, on the para other paragraphs, and then we close. There is the one that talks about among the followers of today, how widespread is this subtle and deceptive sin, how often our service to Christ, our communion with one another, is marred by the secret, secret desire to exalt self. So there's always self-gratification that is being highlighted here. Um, and really, we have discussed the remedy as well. So... The, 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 this selfishness, this self-centeredness has to stop and Christ is the only remedy. Uh, I think the beauty of it is that we have a problem because we are born in a sin, sin sick world and if we truly understand the plan of redemption then we'll cooperate without um, without arguing with anybody without actually arguing with self, because here yeah, the issue is self, so we're arguing against self. But if we look at the Gospel Commission, we say, goi, therefore, that shows us that we have to be selfless, because it doesn't say, go and preach yourself and try and, I mean, and, try and save yourself. No. We are to go and seek the lost. So we're going to go and seek somebody else and say, okay, this one we meet, let the Holy Spirit lead their feet, uh, I mean, for heaven. Everybody we meet, they're fit to enter into heaven. That's why we have to preach this gospel. 
So it's always about the, the mission of Christ was self-sacrifice, self-sacrifice. So you put the other people first. So if you follow Christ's example, even those who are married, life becomes easier. Because you want to be selfless, you want to first consider the other person, consider the other person. So that is uh, beautiful. It is really uh, my prayer that we will follow this remedy. And because Jesus is love, it doesn't just highlight uh, an issue or highlight a problem with the Pharisees and the problem that is an issue that is still here today even in our churches, in us. He says, I am the remedy, but you can take the remedy. So we can either take the medication or we can decide, no, Christ has prescribed, has diagnosed and shown us this is the issue, but we either want the remedy to be, we want, I mean, to take the remedy or we refuse to take the remedy. That is up to us, but uh, may God give us, I mean, a willingness for us to surrender really. Uh, let him, as we have discussed before from the beginning, that, I mean, the, the transformation, this renovation from within is really a miracle. But we are not here to seek how God does it. We are here just to accept that God is able and willing right now to transform us, to do the work of renovation in us so that wherever we go, we we'll reflect the, I mean, the character of Christ. Our lives will be a reflection of his character. And that will be beautiful in the end. I think it is all of us that is our wish. Any other comment before we close? Uh, Sister Hop? Yes, brother. No, you know, God is so merciful. Christ is so merciful. You know, when he said he's, he's going to give us the Holy Spirit, but he also says the comforter. Comforter, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. And uh, we get into such circumstances. And, and uh, many times, and most of the times, God allows us to be in certain situation, right? Uh, there's nothing that comes by me or you just by coincidence. No, uh, because it's character building. So let us not think it's so negative. Because when we see Christ, he's teaching us something about, uh, uh, about me. If, I, if, if I'm, for some reason, I'm in an occasion whereby, mm, you know, where self begins to come in. It's only him who can put it, uh, uproot it out. But he comes with prayer, but he also comes with comfort. Right, because we have to be comforted, and we go and say, uh, 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 many times we go through situations uh, whereby you feel maybe there's no forgiveness, maybe all those things is about self, you know, like you said, strife, like you say, anger, you say, all these, these bad habits that Christ is talking about. But He says, He's given us the comforter. He will comfort us to go through those times. So it's not, uh, as we're saying, that it's not so much of us. It's the Holy Spirit working into our hearts. As long as we say, God, God take this heart of mine. I give it to you. Because I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, 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 take it. My, I cannot leave it myself. I cannot live that life. Take this life. Take this heart. I don't know how. But it's only Christ, it's only the power of the Holy Spirit who indeed comforts us through the struggles of self that we have. But as, as long as we, we are so prayerful because Christ allows us, as, as I said, to go through certain circumstances to checklist our character. Then we don't retaliate, then we don't think bad. If we think bad, back onto the throne of grace. It, it takes us back to prayer. Ah, this should not be in you, you know? 
but we have to let the Holy Spirit continue to work in us and to abide with us and to chisel us and to prune us. We shall be battered. But as long as we are grounded in Christ, he will give us the victory. Amen. Amen, indeed. I think it's, uh, that's why I said Christ is the only remedy. He says only the power of God can banish self-seeking and hypocrisy. This change is the sign of his working. Um, this is beautiful. If we all surrender to Christ, he will do the renovation in us and imagine there will be no strife among us. So I'll take Brother Desire and then uh, we will close because it's 7 o'clock. Oh, sorry, that was from last time. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone, for taking part in the reading. I think it's, uh, for me, it's been a beautiful journey every day. I've taken, a, I mean, a takeaway. There's a lot to ponder, really. Uh, a lot to ponder and learn a lot to point um, fingers uh, at myself. So, but on our knees, we will win this battle. Really, uh, it's only through Christ. That's why I always think to myself: all things are possible through Christ. Why? Simple because He said so. And uh, Christ doesn't lie. He's not a man that He should lie. So whatever God has said, if God is saying He has all the power to transform us into His own likeness. That is the truth. It is written. So I will run with that. And uh, Sir Alan has put a prayer request that uh, uh, may God pray, I mean, help us to die daily. But um, really pray for all, all of us to die daily to self. But my prayer is that may we make uh, a decision to die to self a decision to surrender the heart fully to Christ because we may say our hearts are surrendered to Christ. Um, Christ knows, God knows whether they're surrendered or not surrendered. I can tell somebody that my heart is surrendered, but what does God say? Does God agree or not? That's another matter. So let us continue to pray. I think we will Okay, this song, let me see. If you allow, can we sing hymn number 570, please, before we pray? Do you, I have any volunteer? I'll take uh, stanza number one. Anybody for stanza number two? Three and four. Do you know this song? I can take. Or, uh, did you say? I'll do number one and then somebody number two, to do number two, three, and four. Okay. I can take number two, brother. I'll take okay. three. Number and then. We'll take four. I'll take number four. Okay. Okay, all right. Not I, but Christ, beloved and all exalted. Not I, but Christ. Oh, sorry, I've made a mistake. Not I, but Christ. Be all that love exalted, no time but Christ. Be sin, be known, be heard, no time but Christ. In every look and action, no time but Christ. In a real no 
not I, but Christ, to gently soothe in sorrow. Not I, but Christ, to wipe the falling tear. Not I, but Christ, to lift the weary burden. Not I, but Christ, to hush away of Christ only Christ, no idol with a phony. Christ only Christ, no needless bustling sound. Christ only Christ, no self important bearing. Christ only Christ. No trace of I be found. Not I, but Christ, my every need supplying. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Let me start again. Not I, but Christ, my every need supplying. Not I, but Christ my strength and health to be Christ only Christ for body, soul and spirit Christ only Christ yeah and eternally Man, it's a beautiful song. Uh, if Brother Jizar can close for us in prayer and really the prayer should be for us to I mean to make a decision uh, to surrender our hearts and to cooperate with divinity uh, let a miracle be done in us let the renovation be done in us so that we may be one in Christ thank you our oh, Father we chat in heaven our Lord be thy name. May your kingdom come. May your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. Lord, we want to thank you for the study that we have had uh, this morning and throughout uh, uh, this chapter. Oh Lord, we, we know this is not by coincidence that we are studying these things again and again. You see that, Lord, there's a great work that needs to be done in our lives, in our characters. Lord, we understand that we, in ourselves, in our own strength, we will fail to do the work that needs to be done. We have no power. It is impossible for us, in our own strength, to change our characters. We cannot change our characters, Lord. So we humble ourselves this morning. And I ask, Lord, for my brethren, for myself, each and every one of us, we know the areas of our lives that we have not surrendered. We know the areas of our hearts that are not surrendered fully to you. Oh Lord, you have said it clearly that if any man will come after me, or we'll deny, we we'll have to deny ourselves, pick up our crosses, and follow you. We might deny ourselves outwardly, but you know the heart. Some of us, we still have our ambitions, our personal goals, personal achievements. We have self hiding somewhere, secret self. O oh Lord, I ask that you may reveal those areas of our hearts that need surrender to you. Could be in spiritual matters. Could be in family matters, in our social lives, in our financial lives. I pray that you may help us to put everything on the altar that we will say, like the Apostle Paul, 
we are crucified with Christ. Then no longer I lives, but Christ lives in us. Oh Lord, thank you for this study. Be with us as we go about the day and every decision that we have to make that we will say not I, but Christ. Bless the instrument that you have used, Lord, throughout this chapter. Bless Brother JB in a special way. Supply all his needs according to your riches and glory. Be it spiritual needs, physical needs. Our Lord, you know his needs. And each and every one of us will wait on you. As we move to the next chapter, we ask that the spirit of truth, our faithful guide, will continue to guide us and to teach us, and to guide us into all truth. Forgive us of our sin, we ask again. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Brother D, and thank you, everyone. Uh, Apologies, I've tarried a bit longer, but this is, um, yeah, this is extremely important, really, uh, because we can do all these readings. We can preach, teach, distribute books, visit the sick, Unless our hearts are surrendered to Christ, we are doing all this physical work and so forth. But at the end of the day, uh, the aim is for us to be redeemed, to be redeemed um, when the time comes. I'll hand over the platform manager. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I, I was... I'm making an assumption, Brother JB. Uh, I don't know whether you wanted to come back to this tomorrow or you had um, finalized today. I don't think there was any questions or un- I mean, um, or any further comments. I don't know, but okay. Yeah, so I think it's the um, twins next. Yes, uh, I think for for me, I was waiting for the comments on the last paragraph, but uh, maybe we can um, just give a few minutes on the last paragraph since the time was running out, and then uh, the sisters okay. uh, will pick up us uh, where they did the time you, you, you wrap up on the final paragraph. But I just wanted to say um, again that uh, it's been a blessing going through this chapter. Uh, every single paragraph has so much weight. Um, you have to contemplate. Um, it um, feels as if the, the, every line that you go through needs going back. Uh, it's um, to be reread again. So it's just the power that uh, um, God has invested in these readings. And uh, this is for our transformation. So we want to thank you for facilitating, uh, Brother JB. And Tackley sisters are ready. Uh, as soon as um, you finish the, 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 the last paragraph, um, just a recap on the last one. Maybe some people were getting ready to 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 tune up um to, to, to come off the platform. Um yeah okay, so this fine. week thank you. Oh brilliant. So this week uh we have a speaker provisionally um I'm still uh for some reason is 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 not reachable now we wanted uh, his confirmation but uh, uh we have um as uh, somebody who is ready to cover this evening, if the speaker is not uh, able to turn up, so we have uh, brother Shingai, um, Shingai Hua, uh, who is uh, going to share in the evening. Uh, so, uh, for the evening presentation from seven to eight, uh, it's going to be if the speaker doesn't turn up. Um, but the program will go as always. Midday, we still have our prayers from 12 to 1. And um, uh, in the evening, program starts at 7 and it ends at 8 p.m. 
Uh, I think that's all really for this morning. For this morning, and uh, thank you again, the prayer ministry, uh, the prayer team for the half night prayer last night. I joined a bit late, uh, but I was blessed at the time I was on. May God continue to bless the prayer ministry. Have a wonderful day, brother. Until we meet again. Amen. Amen.